the Ichabod can't enter the palace to eat her. No, I think it best, said Spittlewood to slow, a slow smile spreading over his crafty face. If you like, if you take Lady Aslanda to my estate in the country, send word when you've got her there, and I'll join you. Chapter 35 Lord Spittleworth's Proposal A few days later, Lady Aslanda was walking alone in the palace rose garden when the two soldiers hiding in the bush spotted their chance. They seized her, gagged her, bound her hands, and drove her away to Spittleworth's estate in the country. Then they sent a message to Spittleworth and waited for him to join them. Spittleworth promptly summoned Lady Islanda, Lady Islanda's maid, Melissa, Melissa, by threatening to murder Melissa's little sister. He forced her to deliver messages to all Lady Islanda's friends, telling them that the, her mistress had decided to become a nun. Lady Islanda's friends were all shocked by the news. She never mentioned wanting to become a nun to any of them. In fact, several of them were suspicious that Lord Spittleworth had had something to do with her sudden disappearance. However, I am sad to tell you that Spittleworth was now so widely feared that apart from whispering their suspicions to one another, Islanda's friends did nothing to either find her or ask Spittleworth what he knew. Perhaps even worse was the fact that none of them tried to help Millicent or was caught by soldiers trying to flee the city within the city and imprisoned in the dungeons. Next, Spittleworth had set out for his country estate where he'd arrive late the following evening after giving each of Islanda's kidnappers 50 ducats and reminding them that if they talked he'd have them executed Spittleworth smoothed his thin mustache in a mirror then went to find Lady Islanda who was sitting in his rather dusty library reading a book by candlelight Spittleworth is sweeping her a bow. Lady Islanda looked at him in silence. I have good news for you, continued Spittleworth, smiling. You are to become the wife of the chief advisor. I'd sooner die, said Lady Islanda pleasantly, and turning a page in her book, she continued to read. Come, come, said Spittleworth. As you can see, my house really needs a woman's tender care. You'll be far happier here yourself useful than pining over the cheesemaker's son, who in my any case is likely to starve to death any day now. Lady Islanda, who's expected Spittleworth to mention Captain Goodfellow, had been preparing for this moment ever since arriving in the cold and dirty house. So she said, with neither a blush nor a tear, I stopped caring for Captain Goodfellow a long time ago. Lord Spittleworth, the sight of him confessing to treason disgusted me. I could never love a treacherous man, which is why I could never love you. She said it so convincingly that Spittleworth believed her. He tried a different threat and told her he'd kill her parents if she didn't marry him. But Lady Islanda reminded him that she, that Captain Goodfellow, was an orphan. Then Spittleworth said he'd take away all the jewelry her mother had left her, but she shrugged and said she preferred love books anyway. Finally, Spittleworth threatened to kill her, and Lady Islanda suggested her he get on with it, because that would be far better than listening to him. Spittleworth was enraged. he became become used to having his own way in everything, and here was wondering he couldn't even he couldn't have it and it only made him want it all the more finally he said that if she liked books so much he'd lock her up inside the library forever he have bars fitted on all the windows and scrumble the butler would bring her food three times a day but she would only ever leave the room to go to the bathroom unless she agreed to marry him. Then I shall die in this room, said Lady Islam.
just lined up calmly, or perhaps, who knows, in the bathroom. As he could get another word out of her, the furious chief, that visor, left. Things are getting hairy. Thank you so much for watching.